called the meeting to order. Make sure your cell phones are either turned off or silenced, please. I stand for a moment of silence and the pledge of allegiance to the flag. on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from the September 3rd meeting. Any changes or anything need to spread to call forward? Seeing none, they'll stand as submitted. Correspondence, Ms. Nutter and Ms. Webster are both off of traveling today. Uh, I've asked Ken to take care of the correspondence readings. Yes, we received a letter on 9-17-2019 uh, via Mr. Ross, BCPO Board. Dear Mr. Ross, my husband and I, John and Judy Howard, are homeowners and volunteers with Special Olympics in Hernando County. We are requesting permission to use the pavilion on Saturday, October 26th, from 4 to 8 p.m. to host a Halloween party for athletes and their parents. We are also asking that security admit them to be able to enjoy a fun time. We will be planning activities as well as a costume contest. We have liability insurance and we'll provide a copy of the policy to you. Thank you for considering this request. Sincerely, Judy Howard, Competition Chair, Special Olympics, Florida, Hernando County. I make a motion to allow John and Judy Howard to use the pavilion on Saturday, October 26, 48 p.m to host a Halloween party for Special Olympic athletes and their parents. Also, that security allow them access to the community. I second the motion. We have a second discussion. Are Mr. and Mrs. Howard here by chance? Discussion from the board. Discussion from the audience. Mr. Ross, um, my concern, because this has been brought up before, when we were asked to allow the Special Olympics to use our bocce court for training, I, if we allow this, I think we're setting a precedent which means that any organization, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, whatever, would want to use our facilities. I think there are other venues that the Special Olympics can use. I know they have their own liability insurance, but still, I don't think it's that we should set a precedent here. Thank you. Other comments from the board? I do need to bring to the board's attention. I did try and call Mr. and Mrs. Howard to reach them. My question for them was, do they have a, a child or family member that's involved in this? If we go to the Rules and Regulations, Article 5, Section 3, regarding pavilion, it does state space is not available through a member for an outside group or parties of, or non-resident friends or events. It's also not available to outside groups unless sponsored by the BCPO. Well, I have a concern about um, the, the hours uh, four to eight. It's going to be dark. Um, I, I don't think that liability insurance, does that mean then that we're not liable if, if somebody gets hurt, the pavilion is 
is lit, but if they're going to be in costume, so I have I have some concerns around around those items. Other discussion? Seeing none, I'll presume the board is ready to vote. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. All those opposed, same sign. The motion fails. Another letter received 9-17-2019 from Mr. Ross, BCBO Board. Dear Mr. Ross, the Brookridge Crafty Stitchers will be having a craft fair on Saturday, November 23rd, 2019 from 8.30. Coffee and donuts will be there, I guess, with fair to follow from 9 to noon at the clubhouse. The money raised from this event goes back to the Brookridge community. Amongst those benefiting were the clubhouse certs, clubhouse certs beautification committee, just to mention a few. We have and will continue to support our community. We request permission to have security admit the general public to our function. This is held annually and we will inform the board of the date each and every year. Thank you for your consideration. Sincerely, Judy Howard, Secretary of Crafty Stitchers. I make a motion to allow Brookridge Crafty Stitchers to use the clubhouse on Saturday, November 23rd from 8.30 a.m. to noon for the annual craft fair. Also, that security allow the public access to the community to attend. I have a motion by the second. I have a second by Ms. Smith. Discussion. I just want to uh, let the board know that I found out from Patrona that I know Ms. Howard said in a previous statement that she is a homeowner, but she never designed, designated where her home is. Uh, it just says homeowner. And I questioned Patrona, and she used to be a renter, and she bought the home that she's living in now. Because I looked in a directory, and her name is not in the directory. So, but she is a homeowner, so I just want to relate that to you. And here. Other discussion from the board? Any discussion from the audience? Seeing none up. Up to the podium with the microphone, please. Name and unit number. I just personally I have a hard time seeing the difference between allowing uh, the Special Olympics people to come in here and the Howards to do what they want to do and other things we allow to come in here and, and work in the community and do things in the community. It's just a personal problem I have. Thank you. The, the, the difference is what's sponsored by the BCPO and what's not sponsored by the BCPO. Crafty Stitchers is an organization in Brookridge sponsoring the event, asking for permission like the men's club and others do to have the outside public be able to attend the event. Still, I have a difficulty. Other discussion? why we are denying Special Olympics access to our pavilion. They have liability insurance. I've had some experience with Special Olympics. I've participated in several of their state level projects with the uh, National Guard and things like that. And this is a well-organized 
you know, well-funded organization that has enough insurance to cover any problems we might have. I don't think there's, there's not going to be an issue because that's why they have liability insurance. They do these kind of programs all over the country. It's not an issue, you know, to deny disabled children the opportunity to have a Halloween party, especially if one of our own is also one of that. I think the board should have given consideration for making a decision to find out whether or not, you know, the, the Howards have a, a disabled child in the program. You know, I, I also am disturbed because this also gives the appearance that we do not support the disability in our, you know, ch you know disabled children in our community. And, and that makes us look heading small. You know, that is very sad. So, you know, I, I would urge the board to reconsider at least based on whether or not the Howards have a child or not. I don't think liability should be a consideration because they do carry enough insurance to cover any contingency. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ellison. Liability insurance is not the issue at this point. The issue we have to deal with is following our governing documents, and our governing documents state that we can't do it for outside groups. If, if, and I did try and call Mr. and Mrs. Howard and left a message asking them to call me. I still have not heard back from them because I, wa I wanted to inquire to see if they have a child and it's in Special Olympics and, and they're living here with them. To date, I haven't heard anything. If they do contact me, I, I will bring it back before the board at that point if, if a child's there. But at this point, without having that and following the governing documents, our only choice as a board is to say, no, the governing documents say we cannot do that. Okay? They do not have a child that will become special Olympics. They do not? They do not. So we have a motion on the floor and a second from Crafty Scriptures. Thank you. I think it's my 51st wedding anniversary. It's kind of like a lot of other things going on, so I apologize for the mind going out there. We're trying to figure out where my mind is anyway. Thank you. So we have a motion and a second on the floor. All those in favor of the motion to state it, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Mr. Giroux, General Manager's report. Good morning. Check with our agent concerning errors and omissions in insurance that Lucy Luguire had asked about at our last meeting. Uh, that is our directors and officers insurance that we carry. DNO is for not-for-profit companies, and ENO is for profit companies. The 2020 resident telephone directory deadline is Friday, October 4th, for changes in your listing. The bpballot.com digital voting is available online if you have signed a written consent to utilize online voting. 260 homeowners are on digital voting at this time. Members may submit in writing items they would like to be considered for the 2020 annual membership meeting. The deadline is no later than Monday, October 7, 2019. Topics will be placed on the Board of Directors agenda at the Wednesday, October 16th, 2019 meeting. To the board, from Ray Giroux, General Manager, our carrier, Citizens Insurance, is requesting inspections on the properties, roofs, and electrical panels in order to be considered for continuing insurance after the 2020 expirations. Properties that don't submit the inspections are needed and needed repairs are subject to non-renewal. -re we have initiated the electrical inspections with Shore Electrical, our commercial electrical vendor. Additional roof inspections and certifications are needed for the clubhouse, pump house, guard house, administration, and public works buildings. If replacements are needed, reserve funds will be used. Any items under $2,000 will be paid from operating. The uh, question came up on Shore Electrical. Uh, they did the inspections for $100 per building, $150 for the clubhouse and pump house. $450 for the inspections. Uh, 
Thank you, Ray. Unfinished business, ad hoc report on wing scoting. Back up for just a second. Ray, I'm gonna elaborate on that a little bit. The, the information that we have on citizens uh, and our insurance policy, do, do the members have, was that sent to them along with the package like for the meeting today? Or is we just added? Online, yeah. It's online. Okay, so all y'all know that you look online and you'll see, instead of, there's quite a few pages here if we were to print it out, hard copies. You know, we're all trying to save money. So uh, you can, the policy is there. Look at the policy. You look at the dedu deductibles and what the costs will be. And this is why the reserve funding is so important because of instances like this. Um, um, for certain um, homeowners that go to our website and they see the portal, and they click that link and they go to my community and register, that's the portal um, that if you register there, that's just homeowners that register, and you can have access to uploaded documents such as the uh, audits, these insurance documents. Those are available to all members now that they're uploaded. Um, but if you don't register, if you're not a resident, you won't have access to that. So it is protected information. Other comments? Mr. Harrison, ad hoc committee report on Wayne Scotty. Stains, please. do with it. Vince had asked us if we could come as close to matching what's on the stage as far as staining and finish up front and the two doors that are on the either side of the stage as far as color wise. The committee has gone out. We're still in the exploration stages. We did try using Minwax. It's a stain and a finish all in one, but it, it was an oil base. Well, you cannot use oil base in here. The fumes from that would be unbelievable doing this whole place. It would be going up to the ceiling. We tried it and the fumes just linger on the pieces of boards that Vince had given us. So what I'm what, looking forward now, our only alternative and the color that we had to pick out uh, with Binwax, with the oil base, they do have colors that are pre-made with the urethane in it, and it's an oil base. There is very limited colors, and the color that we picked out would match more to the red doors that are under the stage. And we showed it to Vince, and we particularly didn't like it. It was a pecan. That was the closest thing we could come. Uh, on the water base, it's going to be a process in the works because you're going to have to stain it, then come back with the water base urethane. And talking to Sherman Williams, the people at Lowe's, Home Depot, Home Depot wasn't really that, I don't know, cooperative or explaining, they didn't have the time, but it's going to require a coat of polyurethane. To make it look nice, so because the pine will have a rough finish, you'll have to come back, if you want to do it correctly, a light sanding over all these boards with a very fine sandpaper. Clean that off, and then put your second coat of urethane. They recommend the third coat, third coat but <laughs> it's, it's a long process. And whoever does this, has to know what they're doing because you're going to have to take the floor, then put drop boards because you cannot get any stain on this floor. It'll go right into the floor. All the money that we spent in here, and you have people coming in here, it is, it's going to look bad. Also, you're going to have to tape above the chair rail up here. 
because you don't want to get any of the stain and anything on this cloth. So that's where we're at. At the next board meeting, we will have all the samples done. Ann Edwards is a professional interior decorator was. She's also an expert on paint. And I am gonna open up the meeting. I'll have her come up here and give them a more formal explanation why we picked what we did, and she'll go into more depth about doing this. The only good thing about Waterbase, as we all know, it doesn't have an odor. So this project, if the board wants to continue with it, it doesn't have to wait till next April. If you want to do the halls, you know, on an off day, something like that, that is we are entirely up the board, Ray, and they get together. So this is where we're at right now, but we will have a full report on October 16th, I think, the next board meeting, and at that point, I said we will give a full report and explain and give the, we'll have the boards here for the board to look at and anybody else, if they want to make comments, they can. We're limited. Okay, here's another problem. On the water base, you can only buy it in quarts, not gallons, quarts. So roughly, we have a thousand linear feet here times three feet high, you talk about roughly 3,000 linear feet of stain, which is going to be approximately, you don't want to run short, you're going to probably need a minimum of 30 quarts of stain. Min uh, the finished polyurethane that we could get in a gallon. And Sherman Williams said to us, if we define, just to let you know, on the oil base, we picked up a core at pre-made at Lowe's. It was $13.98 for the core. We went over to Sherman Williams. They wanted $19.98 for the same core. This was the oil base. And we had them, I think Rich is the manager there. We spoke to him. He would match. Lowe's price. He won't give us an additional discount because he's matching their price. He will give us a discount because we have an account with Bo, uh, with Sherman Williams. He will give us a discount on the gallons of polyurethane. That's where, you are, that's where we are right now. I want to thank you very much. Good job. Paul, so is, is the ad hoc committee leaning more towards the water base? A hundred percent water base, yes. Okay. Because even like I said, we spoke to Lou. Lou is the gentleman, the wonderful carpenter, I got to say. If you look at his work here, it's unbelievable. Go down the hall. We spoke to him and he highly recommends water base because he has also done painting. And uh, I, believe it or not, our friends, we went down to visit him Saturday in Safety Harbor. Am I taking up your three minutes? Okay. He was in construction. He did million dollar homes on Long Island. And he painted, stained. He highly recommends the water base to go 100% with that. And then you get a full report with the uh, actual boards with stain on them. On, on October the 16th yeah, at the window. We'll have all the boards out. We'll show you the one with the oil base. It'll probably still smell because it's Ann Ann, Ann Edwards did it uh, over a week ago and you can still smell the, the oil base. And like I say, we're in the final stages right now of trying to get as close as we can get to that stage color. So, any questions from the board? Frank? Frank? Yes. I also. I also talked to Lou. I'm glad you talked to Lou. And he was really saying the uh, the water base. He said it would you'd, you'd die in here for the whole winter if you used oil. But he suggested, I don't know if he mentioned it to you, he said not to use any stain, just to put on the, the polyurethane. Okay. It we would bought save it, a lot. 
go and we bought a, a small can of water-based polyurethane. Yeah. Because what we're doing is we're staining the boards and then we're urethaning them. We have what it, what it looks like the first one board will have two coats of urethane. She did it, she's doing it halfway. The other the bottom half will have one coat of urethane over the stain. Uh, yes, Lou had mentioned if we did it with the oil base, those fumes would be lingering up here in the ceiling for frankly for a long time and for the amount of use that this room gets when the snowbirds are back. It, it, it would take a long time for it to, to dissipate through the air conditioning system and all that, which we don't want to do. So oil base is definitely out, even though it's got the urethane and the stain all in one. Any other questions? Any questions from the audience? I just want to know... <laughs> Name and unit, please. We see the wire. Uniform. I just like to know, are we going to have this gentleman, who is a master, it seems like, what he does, do the work? And is that going to be considered as part of the overall expense? At this point, we couldn't tell who the contract will be because the stain, what's going to be done to the, the wainscoting at this point hasn't finally been determined. Once that's determined, then we'll look at contractors to do the work. Right, because you do notice, I mean, people are saying this guy is good at what he does. And this is what we need to consider. In the pricing, maybe he'll give us a break. Oh, I just want to, Lou had also said, who the gentleman from Randy who did the North Hall, butchered the North Hall. He couldn't believe the work that that gentleman did. Yes. Not up to his standards by any means. Yeah, I also talked to Lou about that, and he said that you know, the contractor that put it in up there put it in differently than he would, but he said every general contractor you talk to, they do something a little bit different than somebody else does. So it's just, it's just what the contractor's uh, method of installation is at that point. Yes. Like I say, if you look here, Lou mited all these joints. If you go up into the North Hall, the gentleman who did that, he just cut a straight line and put two boards together on the top, top rail. It just doesn't look cool, like I said, you know what I mean? But uh, thank you. Thank you for the report on the Wayne Sunning Ball. Thank you, the committee. Thank you very much. Moving into new business, appointment of two new unit representatives. Ms. Smith? leaving vacancies in Unit 1 and Unit 4. However, we have Hope and Paul Campbell of Unit 2 who have volunteered to be unit reps. They have submitted the resumes and will be included in the October 1st board meeting. Excuse me, board workshop. Thank you. I make a motion to appoint Hope and Paul Campbell as unit reps to fill the two vacancies. I have a motion on the floor. Do we have a second? I second it. I have a second by Mr. Sajak. And Mr. and Mrs. Campbell here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Discussion by the board? Seeing none, I'll presume you're ready to vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those in favor, same sign. Have to pass the motion first. Mr. and Mrs. Campbell, would you come up front for me, please? Hope, Paul Campbell. 
know where you raise your right hand for me. You solemnly promise and swear that you'll administer the office to which you've been appointed to the best of your ability and judgment in conformity with the governing documents of footprint of union property owners incorporated. That you will in all your acts be governed by the principles of honesty, justice, and fair play. And in every manner possible endeavor to promote and safeguard the best interest of the citizens of Brookridge and the welfare of its memberships. Do you so swear? You put your hands down. By virtue of the authority conferred on me, I do hereby proclaim you are duly appointed as unit reps and officially installed in the office. Thank you very much for your volunteer. for a new club, Light Gatherers and med Meditation. Subject is Light Gatherers and Meditation Group to the BCPO. I'm requesting a room for our group to meet the first Tuesday of each month, beginning October 1st. Our group name is Light Gatherers and Meditation. Chair is Gail King. Co-chair is Esther Everham. We will not be collecting funds, donations for our group. It will be for Brookridge residents and their invited guests. I spoke with Patrona Truman, Truman on September 19th, and she advised that the room and the time are acceptable. We meet the first Tuesday of each month, room E, 6 to 8 p.m. Thank you for consideration for our group, Gail King Chair. Motion is to approve a new club light gathers and meditation for Brookridge residents and invitees and allow the use of the clubhouse for meetings following the normal SOP for room reservations based on availability. I have a motion on the floor. Do we have a second? I'll second it. I have a second by Mr. Sajak. Discussion? I have one question. On the application, and I don't know, Patrona, do you have, if they don't have a point of contact down here? It will be Ms. King. Yes, but there's no number here. Do you have a number? Yes, I do. So if other members are interested in joining this group, they contact you? Okay, but the number will be there. Yes. Okay. Other discussion? Discussion from the audience? Seeing none, I'll presume the board is ready to vote. All those in favor of the motion is stated, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Reporting to records, I'll start at my right with Mr. Matthews. <coughs> I got one, whoop. On the uh, uh, next ACC meeting is scheduled for October 11th at 9 a.m. and the clubhouse is, is closed. That's November. I'm sorry, November 11th. I'm sorry. Thank you, Patrol. November 11th at, at 9 a.m. and it's going to be moved to the 12th at 10 a.m. right after the unit rep meeting because of the holiday on the 11th. Correct. What committee? ACC. Meets in the administration office yes. on the 2nd and 4th. No. 2nd and 4th, Mondays of the month. ACC. And then November the 11th is the 2nd. November the 11th is the 2nd, Monday. We meet in the, uh, we're going to be closed. Yeah. So. The November ACC meeting That's what I'm talking about. is, it's not held in the clubhouse, it's held in the well, office. I said the clubhouse, I made a mistake. Okay, yeah. that's what we're confused. Okay, you're going to have it. It's going to be at the administrative building. Uh, we're not closed on Veterans Day. We're not closed on Veterans Day. I was told you were. No, right. never have. Well, okay. No. So sorry. Yeah, we're not closed on Veterans Day. Memorial Day, that's what maybe you think in the last... Uh, well, I rescind that. <laughs> okay. That's, that's what we're confused over here. Now we're, I, have, I have another item with the RV compound I'd like to read out of the rules and regulations, stand, standard operating proceed. Well, not the standard, the rules and regulations. 
Put it down. Article 2, Section 1, which deals with use and storage within the RV compound. This is only for informational only. Item A on the Section 1 says, only motorhomes, travel trailers, boats on trailers, recreational vehicles, non-commercial utility trailers, and car dollies will be assigned parking spaces in the RV compound. No storage of salvage good, steel, building material, appliances will be permitted. And we're under the assumption that cargo trailers are not allowed because they're storage units. And there are also cargo trailers down there from people that live in here that are mowing lawns in here, and that's a commercial vehicle. Just a matter of fact, no, nothing to do on it right now. Just wanted to let everybody know. Thank you, Mr. Stewart. I got a comment on that. Need to hold a member comment for director's reports at this point. Ken. Just to remind everybody, since November 11th was men mentioned, uh, Ken Sajak and myself are chairing a, memor a Veterans Day ceremony. That's November 11th, Monday. At, it'll start at 10 a.m. Um, we'll have the color guard and we'll have, uh, I believe, the Men's Association is going to cook hot dogs. We'll have a hot dog lunch. We'll have a musical program and it's to salute all our veterans. So that starts at 10 a.m. on Monday, November 11th. Ms. Smith? I have nothing to report right now on the beautification committee. We're having our first um, meeting this week in October, uh, as well as um, the sign, the front sign is still a work in progress. I have not heard from uh, Linda Stewart uh, if um, exactly when they are planning on taking down the, uh, the forms around the uh, concrete on the ends of the sign. So that's still a work in progress. And no, it won't be finished by October 1st, but it will get finished. Thank you. Mr. Sajan. Yeah, I just want to elaborate. I feel sorry for the ACC folks that have their meeting that Veterans Day. Uh, hopefully you'll have a short agenda and you can come and join us in the clubhouse. Get a good lunch and catch whatever part of the show that you can. We'll go now to member comments, and I'm going to start on my right hand end again with Mr. Matthews. That was the only. That was the only comment I had was from the. Uh, RV compound and the ACC committee, I guess we're back to 9 o'clock on the 11th of November, and we'll hurry through. <laughs> Just to remind everybody, we do still have New Year's Eve tickets available. Yeah. Social bands of New Year's Eve tickets still available. The deadline to, per uh, to purchase those tickets will be December 1st so that we can alert our caterer. It's a five-course meal, um, music, champagne toast at midnight, and all the good goodies. And our theme is New Year's Eve in New York. So you can contact Val Stratton. It's forty dollars per person, and I don't think you can find any cheaper venue. So come join us in New York on New Year's Eve. Thank you. Ms. Smith. Uh, just a quick, um, for the singles, for Sunday night, we will uh, be having a movie night, so any singles that are out there uh, in TV land, come join us 6 o'clock Sunday night for a movie here at the clubhouse. Uh, we'll provide the popcorn, just bring whatever it is you want to drink. Um, also, uh, the singles meet on Tuesdays at Strike City for bowling, so come and join us. If you can't bowl, you can cheer us on. And today also we are going to Papa Joe's uh, at four o'clock uh, for they're having their 99 cent all you can eat pasta 
today at Papa Joe's. So, um, but it's it's for, that's for everybody. But the singles are, the singles are going to be going and. For any singles that want to meet with us, we'll leave up here by the uh, uh, tennis courts at 4 o'clock and we will carpool out to Papa Joe's. So that's all I've got. Mr. CJ? Yes, I'd like to take a poll. How many of you, raise your hand, have voted online? All right, put your hands down. How many of you have had a problem? All right, it's almost 50, 50. All right, the issue was is I had a problem trying to get online and finally I, you know, I called a number and I sent an email and they helped me out and I got to vote for the budget. When it came time to vote for the amendment, I'm still in limbo and I'm still waiting to hear from them. It looks like I'm gonna to have to come up here to the clubhouse to be counted. These are two very important issues that need to be voted on and if you can't vote online, because I talked to Mr. Jerome this morning, and he had, what, 60 people that you had that had voted? Correct, there have been 60 that have double you voted. Have, double that voted. double voted. That voted right. on both amendments. Right. So about five or six that only got one. Vivian and the office staff have the telephone number uh, for uh, customer service for the company, so if you haven't called the office to report the problem, you haven't been given the number and the name of contact, right. but you said you did receive an email from them. Yeah, but I haven't heard anything more about the second one. He said he's going to talk to a software specialist. So you have reached I used, out to him, right? Yeah, I okay. reached out to him. Thank you. Uh, I haven't gotten to the second part yet. I got to the second part. Will, will allow me to vote, but it, the screen freezes and doesn't go anywhere. You want to comment on that? Yeah. Okay, come on up. Glad to hear from you. And Rosemary, I don't. I don't plan on stepping on your toes as far as the budget goes, but I'm just throwing my two cents out there. Maybe a half a dollar. Every half dollar helps. <laughs> Not me, Violet, even six. I called uh, Becca Ballot five times yesterday before somebody called me back about it. Um, I called the office, the office said to reach out to them. Finally, a man called, and I was able to, he gave me a password. Okay, and we were able to get in. I was able to do the two votes. Frank was still having a problem with it, and what the man suggested was he had too many windows open on the computer. Back out of everything, sign back in again, and that, that second vote should go through. Try it. Was that, was that a phone call? Did you say the spectrum or the no, better? Okay. <laughs> as, as you can see, as uh, we read off here about citizens insurance requiring roof inspections, this and that, you know, be, any repairs will have to come out of reserve funding. This is why the reserve funding is so important. A lot of people think you got a lot of money out there. It can go very, very quickly, especially if you've got to put new roofs on. We own this property, we have to take care of it, and we also have to insure it. But these are two very important issues that are being placed upon you, and I urge everybody to either come in and vote or try to do it online or whatever, but everybody's vote needs to count. We got 2,400 properties in here, and I'd like to see at least 1,500 votes. Thank you. Thank you. At the last board meeting on the 18th, there were several questions raised that I want to bring your answers back to you on. Uh, board member Nutter had asked uh, about why you don't, well, you don't have a committee with the liaison, liaison to oversee the spending and she had quoted some SOPs to me and I've reached out to her with email and, uh, and I wish Ann was here but she's having a nice time probably away on her trip. She is in the process of putting together suggestions for how and if we would put a committee together like that. When she has those together she'll present those to me and the board and, and will present uh, what the decision is to the general public. Question was asked in regards to who vets the contractors. I received a statement from Linda Stewart. Linda Stewart is our project manager, also uh, a resident of Brook Ridge, even though she's a snowbird. Linda has 40 years as a project manager in the Chicago area. Her statement is this. 
All contractors considered for all trades on the Monument Project were extensively vetted by me for being licensed and insured. All spoke against bonding due to the cost and the rarity of bonding on jobs in Florida. Also, they had to be recognized and in good standing with Nature Coast Builders Association. I vetted 10 general contractors. I vetted four electrical companies. I vetted three engineering companies. We also had personal building contractors refer us to the contracted engineering. We chose a team of draft board engineers of Bruce E. Walters with Byron Scott Drafting and Design. This is not a resident money improvement, rather a donated repair remodel for our community, which addresses a deteriorating monument, rotted wood roof, was threatening to come down on vehicles and people, as well as rotted wood letters, crumbling at the touch, etc. I still have confidence in Home Rescue, Nick, and we are still have a lot of our money. I wish I was there to help with the angry folks. If I was there, I would say we have only paid the deposit to Nick and received more work than we have paid him for. Also, he is not pressuring us for more money, while he has responded 100% for problems he didn't cause. When the concrete is cured, he will start the finishing coat, trim, and letters installed were very close. And the first statement. Question was asked in errors and omissions insurance, and Mr. Giroux answered that in his, uh, in his manager's report. <coughs> Excuse me, also errors and omissions insurance is a liability type insurance. It doesn't cover anything other than liability. Performance bonds were, were asked about. We're looking into the cost of those. Question was asked in regards to Merrill Lynch. We had Merrill Lynch contact us. Mr. Giroux and I had a, a meeting with the Merrill Lynch folks, and we had a uh, good conversation with them. They do offer uh, CDs, and what we found was that one of the biggest problems we had was with some of their material. Although it says they're bank CDs, CDs at the bottom of all the material, it says they're not FBI insured and not guaranteed, and we could lose funds. Uh, we referred them at that point to our legal counsel because they assured us that they were FDIC insured. And of course, you got one, one on one side saying one thing and one on and, and, uh, information on your side of the paper saying another thing. So we referred them to our legal counsel uh, and said, if you can uh, show him and convince him and he can convince us that they are FDIC insured, then the conversation can go forward. We found out from them in our first conversation that they do get bank issued CDs. Uh, they currently are getting no better rates than we currently have on our new CDs as we go forward from there. However, there, I asked them what's in it for Merrill Lynch, and they said, well, we get 0.03% uh, of, the, of the income is, is what Merrill Lynch gets back. So that means if we've got a CD that uh, with them that we're getting a, a hypothetical 2% on, and we've got one that's local that's 2%, the to CD through them, and we don't officially get 2% because we're, we're going to have to pay a 0.03% on that. The second item on that whole thing is our governing documents. Our governing documents say that we cannot have an employee, either a paid or unpaid uh, financial advisor. Okay? So if they can come up with I don't know how they come up with it, but if they come up with the information that would convince us that it would be worth going forward with them, what the board is going to need to do is decide if we want to change our governing documents, allowing us to do that. That's where we stand at this point. So it will entail another meeting with them. We have not set a date for that yet. As soon as that is set up, we'll let you know when the date of that meeting is set and then we'll give you a report back after that meeting. So you've got your information then on Merle Lynch. Member comments from the audience, please. Thank you. Um, I'm going to start. I'm going I'm to hold you a second, Lucille, and I'm going to start on this side because I've held, he, he's got two things on his mind, and, and <laughs> we need to get him out there. Thank you. Come on, brother, please. And on that, the last statement that you made, as far as you have to change your documents, that would be a membership vote. Uh, no, that that's, in, that's in standard operating procedures. So that's the SOP. That's the SOP. The board can change that. That would also, 
and I'm going to hold for just a second again because although the board can change that, uh, be it known that before the board would change that, it would come before a meeting, either a Tuesday or Wednesday meeting, for discussion and comment from from the residents. So the board is going to just go around changing SOPs uh, because we can. We're going to get, as we have in the past, uh, interaction on that. Any thoughts? And, I was going to say thoughts and prayers. Yeah, thoughts and prayers. All right, it's Ken Wall, Unit 4. First, on the ad hoc committee, Plains Cody Park, I think we deserve a round of applause. We should have had some ad hocs on the board. And uh, now to move on to Frank Matthews on these cargo trailers. It's kind of funny. I went through there yesterday, and they've been on my mind too. We've got 47 cargo trailers in there. 47. And I know at one time maybe they were allowed. So if you read the fine print, it doesn't say cargo trailer. You know, we know they're being used for storage. Uh, it's not fair to everybody. Right now, I've got a waiting list with eight RVs and boats on that list. Take an 18, 20 foot cargo trailer. Some of them are that big. That could be a boat set there. It's called an RV compact, recreational vehicle. Uh, something like that. Oh, on this double boat, you know, it might take that to get things passed saying that people get the boat twice. <laughs> no, no, no. They don't vote twice. They have two things to vote for. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll only take one, Ken. Okay. I thought you'd come up with a new way here. <laughs> Since I'm on my right hand side, left to you, I'm gonna I'm gonna go front to back, Mr. Harrison. This time you really do get three minutes. I know. <laughs> I'm gonna have to sit down and then come back in. Got a seat for that. <laughs> uh, one quickie on the floor, just to let you know. Excuse what me. Gonna... Okay, Paul Harrison, Unit Four. Whoever the board decides to, which way they want to go, you just can't have anybody coming up here doing this. We need somebody with experience. That's all. Right. And also, I don't know if everybody knows, there is a letter from Ray in this month's news of views explaining all about the floor, the costs. If you go to the, I found out from Anna Webster that if you go to the office, they have it there also, but attached to that is the actual costs per whatever work has been done. So it's a more elaborate breakdown than just the letter. So anybody's interested, they have it at the office. I didn't know if they would have had it here today, but they did. Now I'm going to the, uh, I got a, things on the, it's on the budget, but it's, I'm just going to the treasurer's report. Uh, just to let you know, Ron, the last board meeting, I brought some uh, questions up regarding the treasurer's report. Ron asked, asked me to do a workup, and this morning I gave it to him to review, and it's up to, up to the board. But my question on the account balances. We, we at Basie, on the AR assessments, we bring in roughly 65, 68,000 a month. Out of that there are $43, $31.25 of that goes towards the operating balance. According to the budget, we have 2,830 units in here that pay into the, the um, assessment. If you take that times the year 31.25, we should be making or accounting for $88,437.50 a month. So what, we're, what we're, we seem to be losing a month 
is twenty thousand dollars which you take that over a year is two hundred thousand a year that we are not collecting and i know we have the arv the vrc fines so we have liens on these so i don't know if that mounts to twenty thousand dollars a month under the reserve account there's nothing listed there as far as what we take in each month, which should be $11.75 times the 2,830 units, comes to 33,252.50 a month we should be collecting. I don't know what we're collecting because it never shows. So on that, I end that. Uh, you, I picked up at the office the other day the bids for the property that are for sale here. One is a lot and the other is a house. My question is, how did we acquire these? The lot and the house. Does the, does the list the address on the house? Uh, the yes, the home is... Uh, 8150 hand, no, that's the, that's the, uh, okay. Well, it's here. Well, it's here. <laughs> you know, it's a house. 14371 De Haven Avenue. De Haven was actually signed over to us by the owner of the house. Okay, so we didn't, we didn't have, what about the lot that we are selling? Can't answer the question for you, I'm not aware of it at this point. Because that was also on the sheet of paper that was at the office. The lot is foreclosure. It was a foreclosure. It was a foreclosure. Yes. So we obtained that property at no cost. Other than any legal fees, it would have been incorporated into it. Yeah. Other than that, we didn't have to pay for that lot. Correct. Okay. One last question on the budget. Um, real quick, your three minutes were up okay. about 30 seconds ago. Okay. So, um, I, so I, I need you to. Oh, okay. And if we've got time, okay. we'll bring you back up, Paul. Right. Not a problem. Thank you. Oh, Rich. Yeah, I'm Dayton. Thanks, Paul. Thank you, Paul. I was trying to visualize Paul. Love you, Paul. Okay. Rich Stratton, Unit 3. I want to say to the people here, uh, don't forget Halloween. I'm going to piggyback on Rosemary, okay? Halloween dance coming up here, Saturday, $7. We've got seats of, uh, six available, and the men's club will be cooking. Unbelievable, huh? They do a lot. Also, I want to also mention New Year's Eve. Rosemary said that too. It's New York, New York. <clears throat> if you've never been there to the clubhouse before, this whole clubhouse changes. The word clubhouse is not even involved. A lady walked in one day and she said, where's the clubhouse? You're in it. She said, no, not I'm in a party room. So people don't realize what we do here for these dances. It's amazing. This place, is, this place uh, changes a lot. Uh, uh, New Year's Eve a dance, uh, 7 to 12.30. Uh, we have a five-course meal, dessert, uh, salad. The band will be Retro Express, which will be playing off also in... Uh, October here, and this band plays on cruise ships, and they play national also. Luck I get that once in a while. They do a great job. Uh, and we have three bottles of wine per table, champagne toast. So if you're not doing anything, it's only forty dollars. And that forty dollars, we don't make nothing. Actually, we I spend more money than forty dollars. Put this together for the food, everything about here, all the decorations we do. So uh, if you wanted to come see me or. Rosemary and my wife, we have tickets, then uh, we would appreciate it. This way, everybody can enjoy it. Otherwise, why do it? Why have the party come us enjoy it? We'll sit there like we do and just read a book all day long. I appreciate that. <laughs> we'll continue down this one side over here. Any other member comments? Um, Ron, just to clarify what Rich was saying, he was referring to our dance Saturday night, which is our harvest fest. And we're going to have hot dogs and beer served at the first intermission, which the men's club is. And that is the $7 per person. So if you want to come in, Retro Express is our van. Exactly. 
Nobody else on the right side. I'm going to move to the left side. We'll go front to back. Lucille. Lucille McGuire, June 4. Thank you to our general manager. I have a clearer picture of how we're insured. Thank you. I want to get back to Merrill Lynch, what was mentioned. Last meeting, last board meeting, you did bring up the word Leo Bernoid. Well, Mr. Bernoid, you said. Do you recall that? I do. I checked with him. He had nothing to do with Merrill Lynch in setting that up. Well, I would apologize to him at that point, but when I talked to uh, James Sprague, I think his last name is, I, I got his card and I, it's gone out of my head, but first name is James, and he indicated that, that Mr. Bernoid did that, and, he, and that's why I said it, if, if, if Leo didn't. Uh, I would no, say, no I, yes, I personally spoke to him because I thought that was a little off of what he would have done. He would not have referred that. And, and I wasn't picking on Mr. Burke. No, no, that's all right. Just, I'm just clarifying. But I thought he had, he had given him that. And when, when he indicated he had, I, I took that his word. So, yeah. Right. That yeah. man was incorrect. He did say that. What I remember from the letter is he said that he checked out the town hall meetings and what, were, what he, was he, being asked. He, he said he went to the, the, the broker website and looked at the meetings. Right. Yes. Okay, because I would think, going back to the item of the reserve funds being invested, it would be great if we had people in Brookridge who would be able to get together and consult with each other and give information to the board who makes the final decision and get some better rates than what has been happening. I understand things are tied up in CDs and so forth and so on, but getting back to the nitty gritty of getting a better return on the reserve funds, that what, that's what needs to be done without any callous situation going on that people are not listening, or secondly, that people are saying, no, it's, it's not going to be correct, we're going to have to pay out. This Merrill Lynch thing, you should drop it. They're, if they're out to make money, that's not for us. Thank you. Thank you. Yellow shirt. I apologize. RV lot, we have voted there. We drove around it last week. It's looking way much better. Thank you, everybody who's putting time into that. It's very noticeable. Um, I need to get a reserve study. I bought it in January. I'm new here. I've been trying to get that document since we bought. I still can't. Where can I get one? I'm on. Huh? Go to brookridge.com. Send me an email and I'll make sure you get the link. Awesome. Because it's hard for me to understand our full budget with this coming up to a vote without seeing that reserve study and knowing when those items were funded the last time it completed. Sure. I do understand the reserve study and all that area. Okay, there's this new uh, Nextdoor website, which has been wonderful. The people on there I love to meet. But questions and things have come up, and I want to clarify things I've been hearing, so I'm just going to ask the board. Apparently our funding for the flooring went over budget, and possibly the pool, all these rumors. Was that items out of our reserve funding? And if so, did it exceed the amount there and deplete that funding? Uh, also, I heard that our state required levels for reserved funding has been raised on us by the state. Is that true? That's something that's going on too. Um, 
the exclusive use uh, boat item that's coming up for regular. That seems to me to be very broad. This board, I think, is, is being very reasonable, very open, very very transparent. But to give that power to the board, I think, in a broad spectrum, could ask for trouble next year or five years from now. We have to pay to go to the pool. All these possible things that are amenities. So um, I can see areas where maybe even the RV lot or something that we may should spend a little bit of money if we're using that boat lot because it's only for 240 people. I might tie it up for the next 15 years of my life, and I expect to, you know, health wise. So I wouldn't have a problem paying a fee for that because it is exclusive to my use. However, also. I don't like having a brand new boat in there and getting dirt all over my feet to get in my boat because it's muddy and grassy and there's bugs and somewhere in this reserve study we should maybe pave it, take care of it, maybe make it secure where there's a, not just everybody and their brother can drive and go on my boat. I just want to touch base with you on the RV lot. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not the liaison for the RV compound. These guys, this group here, they've done a terrific job with that lot. I've been here eight years, and I know what that lot used to look like. It used to look like a junkyard, and it's finally getting cleaned up. Now, as far as the exclusive use, yes. We, the, the, the proposal for the exclusive use amendment, yes, it is a little broad, and yes, it is a little for interpretation, but you, you the people out there, vote us in to watch over your funds, and you have to have trust in us. A lot of people have faith in me, and I do my darnest. To, I support this community, and I put all my time and effort into it. But we had to make it broad, because, like, like regional fees. If we put a dollar amount in there, and it's a deed restriction, that, ch that amount can only be changed to a membership vote, which I have to wait till the following year. Now, think about this. Uh, you're new to this community, right? Okay, I've been here eight years. How many people you think reserve the tennis courts or the bocce ball courts? The pool, there is, it's already in the deed restriction. So that, that, that segment is already in there. Now, I, as you can tell, I, I'm a firm believer in the, in the proposed amendment for, for these simple reasons. The only, and, and we didn't alienate anybody, is the RV compound. That's why it's all inclusive in there. We didn't alienate anybody. But the RV compound, out of 250 slots in there, I think the last I heard was 63 people donated money to it. Somewhere around there. 90 out of 250. I know people for a fact that won't even give you a penny for that one. Because they call it an amenity. And, they, and they've had, and this, this one person used to be a lawn company. And he just has a trailer and it's just going to sit there. Doesn't use it for anything. Not for long. Well, well, anyway, it's not a cargo trailer. It's an empty trailer. And once a trailer is registered and it has a decal on it, it's legal. Correct? Well, I don't know. We oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. That's not, that's not, that's not. So anyway, that's my take on it. And that, I just want to liberate a, a little, uh, just reiterate a little bit on the, okay. on the exclusive use. Yes, yes, I, I do didn't... believe it's broad, but... I just want to comment on your statement about blacktopping. Where are you going to put the retention point for the water runoff? Yeah. 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 I talked with maintenance down there, and they explained to me that if it was ever blacktop, there would be, have to be retention ponds for the water, which we don't have the room for. Trailers would sink into the blacktop. It would be more of a mess. And they also said they do not want anything on the ground except for grass. No rocks, no mulch, no rugs, no boards, nothing. That's for the maintenance crew. Thank you. Just to clear up a point, ma'am, uh, this uh, neighbor thing, uh, it, some of it is good, some of it's bad. We did not go over budget on the pool. The expenses and repair of the pool were because the county told us that we had to make these repairs or they would shut the pool down permanently. 
So we didn't have any control over how much we had to spend at that point. It was dictated by what the county said we had to do for repairs. <coughs> just, just one other quick item on the RV compound. When we get all these trailers that shouldn't be there out of there, there's going to be plenty of room for everybody that has an RV. My name is Terry Hemmings, I'm in Unit 4. And since the date restriction and voting has come up, I want to clarify a few things. I received my invitation to vote online last, I think, Wednesday, which I did. Um, and at that point, I expressed my opinions on a couple of different websites. And it created a firestorm. And it got so off tangent that I apologize to some of the people involved. But one of your past board members encouraged us if we have questions, we should come and answer. So here I am. First of all, I never said a thing about the budget other than you all need to make up your own mind if you want to pass the budget or not. I have never tried to vote down that budget. Never. Secondly, I have problems, as Mrs. Farmer stated, with the power that the deed restriction would give to the board. In the July town hall meeting, you used an example of shuffle. You remember that. At the following board workshop meeting in August, a club was proposed that was going to be limited to 16 people. And at that point, I asked the question, is that exclusive use? Well, eventually the 16 person thing was removed. The, the, the club passed. It's come to my attention since then that there is another club that is a restricted to 16 members with a substitute list but none of the substitutes have ever been called. This is a seasonal bunco group, is exactly what I'm talking about. None of the substitutes have ever been called, even when the 16 people aren't there. Is that an exclusive use if it's a closed group? Hard question to answer, I know. You don't have to answer it right now. But I'm just bringing up the point the words exclusive use can be interpreted in a variety of different ways. Another thing that has come up is our barcode. The barcode on my car is mine. I'm the only one that can use it. Is that exclusive use? And am I going to have to eventually pay for it? Again, you don't have to answer, but the point I want to make is, for all of the people that said, I don't speak up at meetings, I do. I come to meetings, I do. And I express my opinions, and I think in a fair manner. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Jerry. And just for everybody's information, Terry sent me a separate email uh, that told me you know, that what he said wasn't aimed at me personally, which I knew because I've known Terry for a good while. And I, I sent Terry a note back and my note said, we have no problems. I appreciate Terry, I appreciate his openness and his willing to, and, and like all of us, we all have different opinions on different topics and we ought to be able to say those and deal with those without fear of, of somebody jumping all over us just because we don't like or they don't like our opinion or we don't like their opinion. For each entitled those. Thank you, Terry. And I just have one quick question, one quick comment. The barcode to me is not exclusive use. It is in a way exclusive use, but it is to keep our community safe. 
and it's to keep, you know, rather than that, we've got open doors that anybody can come in, and so the barcode is, as far as I'm concerned, it's to keep our community safe. Linda, I agree with that, but the question still arises, is that exclusive use? It's exclusive. And, and, it's and exclusive. The problem is, it's, it's just too broad a definition. We, we don't have a good definition. Barcodes are exclusive use to everybody that lives in and is registered in Burroughs. So in regards to that, if you want to say that's exclusive use, yes, it's exclusive to everybody that lives in Burroughs. So it is and it isn't. <laughs> it, it, if, you live, if you don't live in Burroughs, you can't get one. So it's exclusive to you because you live in Burroughs and your vehicles. I've already finished on the right side. I'm going to come back on the left. Jackie. I'm Jackie McCabe, and I think I live in six, do I? <laughs> I'm here today because I'm selling tables for the garage sale. Um, and I'll be here again next week. Um, but I would like to say one thing in favor of Petrona, Ray, Greg, and this board. I heard a lot of criticism at the last meeting. I want to tell you, I think you're all great. And you do a lot, you give a lot of time, and you spend a lot of time doing things for all of us. And thank you. Thank you. Good job. I just want to remind everyone, oh, trying to turn in unit three, an employee. I just want to remind everyone that our flu shot clinic begins tomorrow. It'll be from 10 to 2 every Wednesday here in the clubhouse. Um, it will be sponsored by Pine Brook Pharmacy. It has a lot of other um, amenities that they can offer to you. They would, uh, they'll do all of the billing for any insurance that you have. Um, there will be a free gift and there will also be a surprise each week. So if you haven't gotten your flu shot yet, um, stop by and get it here in the community. Gotham's really trying to um, help our community and offer things that he knows are important to the folks who live here, especially some of our very elderly um, residents. So stop by, see what all he has to offer, and get your flu shot. The Trona, the ones are doing shingles too, right? Yeah, shingles and pneumonia. And those, may, those who may be by appointment, like, you may not bring them each week, but if you want one, you will, you know, get it up to you. You get the single shot, you need to bring your own nails and hammer. <laughs> <laughs> well, you get the different shingles. <laughs> Beverly. Think Patrona, the shingle shot has to be refrigerated for a certain amount of time before yes, you can. And you also have to have a refrigerator. Beverly, I'm signed Unit 6. I'm also chair of the unit reps, and I want to welcome our two newest unit reps, Campbells. And I'd like to invite anyone interested to come to our meetings. Or we have open meetings the second Tuesday of every month. Our next meeting is October 8th at 9 o'clock at the administration building. And I encourage everybody to vote for the budget. <laughs> Thank you. Others on this left-hand side over here? We'll stay on the bar. Unit four. Uh, okay, I'm just going to get back to something I want clarification on. At the last meeting, we were talking about if that passes, where you can start charging the RV compound. It's going to go into the operational fund. And yet other people are still saying, no, that's the general fund. Can you clarify? And then once it's in the operational funds, if it does pass, and hopefully it's going to be done carefully for the size of the space that's available through the RV committee. Can you explain the operational funds and it would be the board taking the money and using it within Brookbridge for whatever is in need? And that is what I need to clarify. Have you clarified? 
Well, let Mr. Drill correct me if I'm wrong, but if, if that passes, the funds would go into the operating fund. They would become part of the total budget. It would be spread across the budget to be used in, in areas as other income is brought in. Other income is, comes into the total amount and, and breaks down from there. Specific use for it, there is not a specific use for it. It would be part of the total monies coming into income in the brokerage. Am I correct, Mr. Drill? Thank you. Um, is there a second part to that? Thank you. Okay. No, the second part was I hope you realize oh. I hope the committee, the RV committee gets it, passes. Perhaps the right input because I think at this point, as, as president of the board, my anticipation as far as president, if it passes, would be to set up, number one, an ad hoc committee of the residents to look at those to see what is what they feel as residents is a reasonable charge and, and how it's divided from there. I'm going to, I would suggest to them in the future they would, they would accept the recommendation that they, when they're setting fees for campground, or the compound, not a campground, seems like it sometimes. But they, they would cut talk with the RV compound um, committee to get their input as far as how those would be charged. Okay? Uh, and just a point on that while we're talking about those, it, those fees in the future, as they have in this past, uh, if you remember not too awfully long ago, the recommendation came from the finance committee on increasing some of the fees in the rules and regulations, which the board can change when they want, if they want. However, this board uh, went to the Finance Committee and gave them some information, and the Finance Committee is the one that made the recommendation to increase a couple of the fees. When we received that recommendation, we brought it before the, the membership at a meeting here. It was on a Tuesday morning, matter of fact and discussed those fees and why that increase would be there. Uh, the same thing would be carried forward if the board was looking at increasing any of the, any of the rules and regulations fees. And that would include not only camp, uh, the RV compound, uh, but anything else that's listed there. If you'll go into the uh, rules and regulations, you can get to on the website. You can see what each of those and what the, what the penalty is and the fine that it carries. Those get voted on by the board, but it, by this board it does not go just the board vote. That goes before the residents uh, in a view before them for full discussion. So that's where that would come from. Mr. Stratton, you asked for another time. Yep, real quick. Again, Rich Stratton and three. Just to get an idea, the board here, I've been in this place with my family 40 years. 40 years. Anybody top that? 40 years? Okay, so Kenny and I. Oh, Kenny and I. So we know, we know what, what went on here years ago. The board is wonderful. There's boards years ago that are wonderful. Of the people here, the people, give me an idea. I president of social dance, I'm in the men's club at Paul, we do a good job, I cook, I clean this place up here, I'm in cars and coffee, don't know about that club, but we have cars and coffee here. It's in the views on the board. It's a great opportunity, the guys come out with their motorcycles and cars, have a good time with coffee, discuss things. I'm in the melting pot club. It goes on and on. I love to quit and sit down like everybody else. But I can't do that. I give my mother a promise that I would do whatever I could to take care of this place to have a good time. It's a good time. And I like to have Paul and I, there's got to be how many men here? I'll just say 500 men. Men! I don't know if you the men's club. I would love to have them come out. We could use a couple of the hands once in a while. But they don't do that. But we always talk about something. But I want people to do something. Period. And the RV people are doing it right now. It's up to me. I'd pull those trailers out there, put them in the driveway. You can find. I would do that. 
You know why? I'm from Chicago. You do things. They let politics handle it their own way. Thank you very much. Well, I got one more question to run. Rich, Chicago also has a saying, vote often. Chicago, Chicago, when the mortician, excuse me, the mortician, you, you order a coffin for a burial, right? He comes there, sometimes he carries it. You know why he carries it? He's repositioning himself. <laughs> vote again. Friend. I just have a question if on the, on the RV compound. What will happen? I know if they charge for the lots, that money goes to the, the regular funding. What will happen to the money that's been donated that they have in their account now that they use for maintenance there now? We may have the control of the RV compound committee. Even if this passes? Even if it passes, the money that's in there, the 9,000 plus, stays under the control of the RV compound committee. Thank you. That was a big question. Good job. Thanks for asking that. Any other member comments? Um, Ms. Farmer. I'll wear hot paint next time to be better. Okay, so if we're going to charge for the RV lot if this passes, so let's say it's hundred dollars for the year for me, and I put my hundred dollars in, but I get caught speeding out on the boulevard which I lose my privileges for 30 days. Do I lose my $100 and have to take my boat out? Like normally I would if I got a violation, I lose my amenities and have to pull my boat out anyway? Don't speed. <laughs> well, I don't, but I've gotten to the point I need to because I'm tired of people on my bottom running fast. Speeding is not a very good subject. But you know what I'm saying? You lose your privileges if you get a fine or this or that. So. People who would have their item in the RV lot right now losing their privilege has to pull it out. Would I also lose my vendor and have to get it towards the spot? How would that work? Good question. Uh, my initial answer uh, I'm losing your spot in the compound would be an affirmative. Yeah. Um, yes. That would need to be pulled out. Uh, would depend how the. It would depend how the RV compound charges are at that point. It would have to be looked at to, to see where it's so much. So it's a question at this point. I really can't answer for you, so. Mr. Jerome. Uh, residents that uh, have their privileges suspended and they have paid tickets to the Thursday or Monday show are not barred from the clubhouse. They're entitled to come to their show. So residents that are have a paid spot would not lose those pay privileges as it stands today. Mr. Harrison. Am I the last? Mm -hmm. Yep, you're the last. Five Ray, seconds. You don't have to Oops, it time's up. <laughs> it won't take three minutes, Ray. We're going to put you over on that side. Exercise. Paul Harrison, Unit 4. Point of clarification. People say we have 2,400 units, 2,450. According to the budget, Rosemary, we, have, we, we assess 2,830 lots. Okay, so. Point of clarification. But the assessment is based on 2,830 bucks. Okay. On the budget, there's an item listed for bad debt. And we put it in the budget for 15,000 this year. What, how do we, what's the bad debt that we are writing off? If a person has not is assessed uh, fines and liens and they have not paid them, occasionally when they do come up to pay, when they are finally paid, sometimes we are not able to collect the entire amount that they owe. This would be our bad debt. We would have to write off 
whatever we could not collect. It could be a point where a judgment was made and, and the bank or whoever, a financial institution say, uh, they owe us 8,000, but you're only gonna get six. So the other 2,000 would have to be written up. But that's where the bad debt comes in. The difference between what we can collect and what they owe. So that's through the, our lawyer? Through, yeah, through yeah. litigation. Okay, litigation. Uh, Ron, besides that one lot that we all, uh, auctioning off. Is that the only lot that Brookridge owns? I believe that's the only lot that Brookridge owns. House and lot. The house and lot. That's it. Okay. Now, on the house, we were opening bid is 35,000. Correct. Whatever, if it's 35, 40, 50, whatever the winning bid is, who gets that money? Me. Me. <laughs> That's I, just want see, That's, I want to see if you're awake. That's <laughs> unimportant. <laughs> Good job, Roger. It goes into the reserve. That whole amount? Yes. Okay. Pro so Pro all the fee legal proceeds. Proceeds. Uh, reserve proceeds. The proceeds. The whole proceeds will go into the amount. So Correct. All the fees and everything have been taken care of up to this point. Correct. Okay. No, thank you. No, no. It's going to take three minutes. No, no, if they owe us, that's why we're proposing. That's why we're selling. So. Clarification. Uh, use, use, use your microphone. Yes. Proceeds. So we pay off the properties assessments, fines and liens, and attorney fees. Whatever's left over goes to the reserve. So okay. the debt the debt's owed comes back out of that, and the, and the, the proceeds after those are uh, taken care of, then go into the reserve. As proceeds. Everybody else, publish five times. Mr. All right, I just have one thing to say about this uh, this network thing. This what they call it, uh, next door neighbor. Remember that was a Brookridge blog, and that was out there. And I started reading it, and it turned my stomach. I, when I first grew up out of high school, went into industry, and I worked. Worst thing you can do for any company, any any amenity, any corporation is rumors. Rumors will destroy you. There's people out there just venting. They're making comments. They want to turn you. They have their own opinions about budgets, about this exclusive use, and everything else. I won't even look at it. I started looking at it. I, I, I can't stomach it. So the best thing for you to do, unless you want to vent or whatever, you're going to vent all you want. But they're like, there's all kinds of rumors out there. And if you start believing in that, you ain't going to know where you're going. And you're going to do nothing but hurt yourself and this community. So just stay away from it. That's my comment. <laughs>